about local extreme a little more. So here we have a graph, and I want to focus on this local maximum right here. Now, what's interesting about this picture? From the left, well, right here, we notice the function is increasing to the local maximum, which, of course, it has to. That means f prime here is positive. And what's happening to the right? The graph is decreasing. So that means f prime is negative. So the left of this local maximum, f prime is increasing, and to the right, f prime is decreasing. What is it doing right at this local maximum? Of course, f prime at that local maximum equals 0. Now if we look at this local minimum, we notice a similar story f prime is decreasing now from the left, and then to the right it's increasing. And right at that local minimum, f prime equals zero. Equals zero. And at this local minimum, f prime equals zero. Now, what about this? local maximum right here. Well, again, we have on the left f prime is positive, and on the right f prime is negative, but right at that point it's a corner. f prime does not exist. Now these aren't all of the local extrema in this picture because we also have these two, this one in the upper right, which is actually an absolute maximum, and the one in the lower left, the absolute minimum. Here, f prime is irrelevant, but these are endpoints. So this actually classifies all of the behaviors which can cause local extrema. So we may have a local extreme if any one of these conditions is satisfied. So one, we are an endpoint. Or two, f prime equals zero. Or condition three, maybe f prime does not exist. Now notice I use the word may here. Certainly, if we are at a local extreme, one of these things has to happen. At every one of these local extremes, either the derivative is zero, the derivative doesn't exist, or we're at an endpoint. But these things don't mean that we have to have a local extreme. So let's examine what this means. Let's examine the first one, an endpoint. So here's kind of a funny function. x times sine 1 over x. It goes up and down, up and down, shrinks all the way down right here. Look at this endpoint. This is not a local extreme. It's not the largest point in a small window about this point because the function goes up and down and up and down right near it. So even though it's an endpoint, it's not a local extreme. So just because you are an endpoint, it does not mean you're a local extreme. Let's look at f prime equals 0. Here's the graph f of x equals x cubed. And if we look right here, right here f prime equals 0. And of course we have a horizontal tangent line. But this is not a local extreme. So we know just because f prime equals 0, it doesn't mean we have to be a local extreme. Now let's look at the final condition. f prime does not exist. So here's kind of a funny graph. I didn't want to write its equation, but there's a point right here where we have a corner. f prime does not exist. But that's certainly not a local extrema. It's not bigger than all the points near it, and it's not smaller than all the points near it. 
So we see this may is essential. We may have a local extreme if one of these conditions are satisfied. And if we have a local extreme, one of these conditions will be satisfied. So with all that said, how do we know if we're given some equation and asked to find the local extreme when we have a local extreme? Well, there are a variety of ways we can check. One is we can use right from the definition. Right here, this local extreme, we know it's a local maximum if it's larger than all the points nearby. So we could plug in x values really near and make sure they're all lower. Or the local minimum, we could plug in x values near that and make sure they're all higher. Or we can use this derivative test. We know the function has to be going, if it's a local maximum, it has to be going up to it on one side and down from it on the other. So we can check, does the derivative on the left, is that positive? And then does the derivative turn negative to the right?